start up the Dragonfly system, we are going to follow instructions that will be on this startup sheet, which uh, has the startup instructions on one side, the shutdown instructions on the other, and will always be in this room, either on the air table, or on that desk, or on this little auxiliary shelf. So we're just going to go through the startup instructions one step at a time. The first step is to confirm that the microscope is available and to log into the iLab kiosk. So I've already done that off camera before starting this video. The second step is to turn on power strips one, two, and three. Those power strips are back here. And so I'm just gonna turn them on. One, two, and three. You'll hear a bunch of noises when that happens. Those are perfectly normal. The next step is to turn on the computer, which is button number four, and log into the Hermione user account. So button number four is down here. You can see it labeled. So if I press that button, the computer will turn on. The computer can take a while to turn on. Once it is on, we are going to log in to the Hermione user account. And the password, as usual, is MSL, all lowercase. If we look at the startup instructions again, you will see that the next step is to load software settings with the appropriate macro. So this requires some explanation. Uh, this software has very poor managing of settings. So uh, you will either need to load generic settings, which you can do by double clicking on this load fusion settings button, or user specific settings if you want user um, settings that or set up for you from here. In which case, if you want to use the user specific settings, you will go to your folder. For example, I could load my settings and you would run this load fusion settings macro. Today, I am going to load generic settings and I will do that by double clicking on this link here. When that happens, a bunch of stuff will be copied and then it says press any key to continue. At that point, we are ready for the next step in the startup instructions, which is step five, and that is to start fusion. The fusion icon is again at the top left hand corner of the screen. We can double click this and fusion will start. When fusion starts, it can take a few minutes uh, for it to load up and communicate with all components. And as it does so, you will get multiple error messages. Uh, this is perfectly normal. The error messages will show up in this panel here, and they are at the beginning a bunch of messages describing how the software can't connect to various things. Then there are laser warming messages, and then there are camera cooling messages. All of those are perfectly normal. Once the software has finished loading, the last messages that remain are messages about camera temperatures. You can ignore those and get started, and while you get started, the temperatures of both cameras will stabilize. The next step in the startup procedure, step six, is to set the location for your files in Preferences, File Manager, Root Folder. I'll show you how to do that. So to set where you want your file saved, we can click here, and we can press this button, which will navigate to the file manager. So we're in preferences, file manager, and we want to select the root folder in which we are going to place our images. So if we browse in here, for example, I would like to place things in my folder. So I'll say OK. That will ensure that all the data created today goes there. To go back to the rest of the software, we place, uh, we click here where it says back to imaging. So the final uh, step of this section of the startup is to set a base name for your images. So that is stated here. And so you can just provide a base name and that's gonna be at the beginning of each of your subsequent images, which will also have the name modified by the day and time. Now you can obviously change this whenever you want, but it's a good idea uh, to adjust this at the very beginning um, to at least have something reasonable when you start. 
The next steps in the startup procedure are optional and they are for humidity and CO2 control. So in step eight, you can turn the knob on the CO2 tank to open it. The CO2 tank is in this corner of the room and we are going to turn the knob counterclockwise to open the flow of carbon dioxide. The next step is to set the CO2 control panel to 5%, step 9. We do that by coming to the control panel, which is here, clicking that, and then increasing that until it's at 5, and then saying set. That will um, make the system equilibrate the CO2 to 5% output. Finally, step 10, if needed, carefully fill the humidity chamber with distilled water to the maximum, which is 220 milliliters. That chamber is here, and it can be filled by removing that, putting that funnel there, and then we will have a bottle of water there which you can use to fill it. For reference, uh, this uh, humidity chamber evaporates at a rate of about a mil per hour. So if you're only going to do a short experiment, um, there might be enough liquid in there uh, to be enough. But if you need to do a very long experiment, you want to max it out to 220 mils. Finally, if you need to do experiments at a temperature that is different than 37 degrees, please consult with us. We will need to uh, adjust the system so that it's at room temperature or whatever temperature you need before you get here. So we will need advanced notice of that.